this episode I'll answer three things. First, what is the cheapest way to use filters with your phone so you can improve your video quality? Second, I'll explain the different types of filters and how each filter impacts the video quality. And third, I'll show you how you can use your camera filters with your phone. If you already have a camera and you want to use the filters to your phone without buying additional filters, especially for your phone, this trick will be very helpful because it will save you a lot of money. Hey there, my name is Gabriel, I'm full-time content creator and now let's dive into the video. First, to be able to mount any kind of filter to your phone, you need to buy a special phone case. There are two phone cases out there on the market that are the best. The first one is Power Pro. Power Pro is primarily focused on producing filters for different camera systems. They produce a lot of filters for drone, for cameras. They're the best on the market, but they're also the priciest. Their filters are really, really expensive. Their solution is called Laser Chase and it comes with different filters and a phone case. Unfortunately, the minimum price you're gonna pay for that solution is $120. That it's quite pricey. I think it's even going more. Yeah, I'm just checking them on their website. The cheapest solution is $150. And if you want the full kit, it costs around $250, which is pricey. As a person who has a camera and has a phone, spending $250 on filters for my phone, it's becoming really expensive. The second solution is to buy Moment Case. With Moment, the situation stays a little bit different because Moment primarily started with producing lenses for phones. So with them you can buy additional lenses and mount them to the phone and they have two solutions. The first one is if you have a lens from Moment, you can buy adapter to that lens and mount some small filters. I don't possess any lens from Moment, so the second solution is the best one I've ever found online. I was looking for something similar for a really long time. So they have a mount adapter that can fit any phone and mostly any filter. So how does it work? You have the phone, just swipe the adapter, position it over the lens like that, and then just tighten gently the knob. Of course, don't overpress it because you can break your screen, so you just need a gentle touch. The best part about that mount is that it fits even phones without cases because I have the moment case because I really love it. So it can fit also phones without any cases. Here I have a cheap Android phone the, the lenses are a little bit far away, so if I mount it sideways, it covers the lenses. But if I mount it from the top side, there is no problem. I can use filters even with that type of phone. So this adapter is universal and you can really use it with any kind of phones. So how does it work with the filters? You can mount any kind of filter that has 67 centimeters diameter. Unfortunately, with my camera setup, I'm buying 82 centimeters filters because my lenses are big and the 82 centimeters is the standard for the cameras. The filters in general are really expensive, so all photographers are buying the biggest filters and after that they're buying adapter rings. The adapter ring allows you to mount bigger filters on smaller lenses. So this is a 67 millimeter, I, I just realized that I lied, it's not 67 centimeters, it's 67 millimeters. So here I have 67 millimeters to 82 millimeters adapter. So now I'll just screw the adapter to the mount and I'll be able to mount any filter I possess in my camera kit. And here we go, it's so damn easy. And the best part is that I already spent the money for the filters. I don't have to spend additional money purchasing additional filters. With that solution, I can really save a lot of money. The filter mount from Moment costs only $30 and the step up ring, the adapter, cost around seven, eight dollars. I really spent a lot of money for the step up ring because the real price is around two, three dollars, but on Amazon, I wanted a fast delivery, so I had to overpay a little bit. So in total, I spent less than 40 dollars for the whole setup and I'm able to mount any kind of filters. Now let's move back and speak a little bit about the filters. That's my case where I'm keeping all my filters. It's really comfortable for transporting them because it doesn't take a lot of space and I have fast access to all of my filters. So right now here I have four types of filters and once you learn about those four types of filters, I don't think you need to learn anything more about those filters. So here I have a UV filter, I have a ND variable filter, I have a hard ND filter and I have a CPL filter. Now let's start with the easiest one is the UV filter. 
20, 30 years ago, all photographers had UV filter in their packs because the lenses weren't that good. All photographers were screaming, you need to buy UV filter, it's very important. Nowadays, the modern lenses are so damn good and they have such a good coatings that the UV filter is pointless. The only purpose of having UV filter is to protect your lens. For example, if I'm recording a car video or maybe a bicycle video, I want to my lens a UV filter. In that way, I'm not afraid if some small stone flies towards the camera and hits the lens, I'll break the UV filter, I'll not break my lens. So the only thing you use UV filters right now is to protect your lens. For recording something with your phone, I find it really pointless, except if you're not doing something really, really risky, but 99.9% .9 of the time I'm never mounting a UV filter. It's really rare that I'm using them. Next we have the CPO filter and this is my favorite filter among all filters. This filter allows you to do real-time Photoshop. It has two purposes. The first thing is to remove reflected light and the second is to remove reflections from the windows. If you do some car photography or videography, it's a must to buy the CPO filter. This filter also removes the reflections from the water. So if you're recording a river or a lake and there is reflections that you don't see under the water, with that filter, it will remove the reflected light from the water and that improves your picture tremendously. The other very handy feature for that filter is that it removes reflections from the sky, but it doesn't work if you shoot directly at the sun. It works only if you shoot around 45 degrees uh, from the sun. So if the sun is here and I'm filming in that direction, when I place the CPO filter, it will remove the reflected light from the sky and the sky will become really deep blue color. It's mostly like you applied uh, some filter in Lightroom. The way how you work with the CPO filter is really simple. Just mount it and then start rotating the filter until you see that it removes the reflections. The CPO filter is a polarized glass, so it's mostly the same like buying a polarized glasses for your camera. Your polarized glasses work exactly the same way how this filter works. So if you don't have a polarized filter, just put your glasses in front of the phone and just rotate them a little bit and you get exactly the same effect. Next in our kit, we have the ND filters. They're just very high quality dark glass. It looks exactly like sunglasses for your camera. The reason people use the ND filters is to follow the 180 degree shutter rule. Naturally, our eyes see motion blur. So if you have some really fast moving subject, you see my hand a little bit blurry and that's called motion blur. To be able to achieve motion blur in videography, you have to use ND filters because you have to control the shutter speed. When the weather outside is really bright, your shutter speed is very fast. And to compensate for that, you just have to cut a little bit of light like that you're putting down the shutter speed. And in that way, you're receiving a cinematic picture with your mobile phone. Here we have two types of ND filters. We have the hard ND filters and we have the variable ND filters. For all mobile filmmakers, I would recommend to use variable ND filters. With my camera, I'm using the hard ND filters. They're a little bit uncomfortable to use because if the light conditions change, you also have to change the filter. And here with the camera, I'm not afraid to bump the ISO if the light goes down or to increase a little bit the shutter speed. The camera quality is really good. And even if I increase the ISO a little bit, you will not see the difference in the quality. Unfortunately, with the phone, the sensor is really tiny. And if you bump the ISO while you are recording with the filter, the quality will drop dramatically. So the best option with the mobile phones is to use variable ND filter and if the situation changes you just rotate the ND filter. So how the variable ND filter works? You have two polarized filters and when you rotate them they're changing the angle so the variable ND filters gets lighter and it gets darker. So if it's very dark outside you just rotate it and it lets more light. If the sun is getting brighter you just rotate it the other way and the filter will get darker. What I would recommend you to do is to get the moment mount, get an adapter, or even if you want to save money, don't get an adapter if you don't have camera, just buy the moment mount and get a variable ND filter for 67 millimeters. And after that, buy a filter that costs between 30 and 70 dollars. Some of the good cheap brands out there are Gope, KNF, and some other. I'll link I'll link a few filters in the description. But all the filters between 30 and 70 dollars that have between two and five stops will be really good. You don't have to spend more money. That those filters will be more than enough for you. Now there is one more type of filter that it got extremely popular this year. This year the glow filter got extremely popular. Some people call it glow, some other companies call it mist filter. So depending on the brand it has two names or it's glow filter or it's mist filter. So the whole idea is that you have your filter 
and there's some particles on top of the filter. There is some structure. And uh, because of that, the light is getting very soft and it shines in really interesting way. If you don't have that type of filter, you can check my DIY hack. Uh, I show you how to create mostly the same effect right here. One thing I forgot to mention about the glow filter, it comes in two variations. You can directly take an ND filter that it's a glow filter at the same time, or you can get a transparent filter that it's a glow filter and you can pop it over your ND filter. As you can see, the different types of filters are really not that complicated. On Amazon, you can find some really cheap filters that are coming with those clippers that you're attaching directly to the lenses. Avoid them, most of them are really crappy. Maybe if uh, the filter costs like uh, 30, 40 euros, maybe it will be good, but you have to check the mounting mechanism because most of the time I had problems how to mount the filter on the phone. So the solution of moment is the best. I hope you enjoyed that video. Don't forget to smile, subscribe, destroy the like button, go check out some more videos and see you in the next episode.